What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to take some uh, um, kind of round cylindrical shapes and uh, rotate them to create kind of a spiraling shape that's moving upward. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, part of the reason I wanted to make this video is just to uh, kind of demonstrate some of the power of using components. It's kind of a continuation of a video I made last week where we talked about inferencing. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to draw a circle out here to the side. So we're going to activate the circle tool by um, hitting the C key on your keyboard. And then uh, kind of hold your mouse over the center point so that it kind of locks to that so that it kind of locks to that point and then move your mouse down the red axis. And if you hold the shift key, it'll kind of lock to that red axis. But basically we just want to draw a circle out here. And uh, we want it to be kind of a decent sized circle. Um, so in this case, I made it about six inches, but um, it doesn't really matter. Um, it just kind of affects the way that everything looks. So um, the size of your circle is just going to affect this. And you can actually adjust this later. But all we're going to do is we're going to adjust that using the push-pull tool. And we're just going to push-pull it up just a little bit. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to select that and we're going to make it a group. Um, for the moment, you know what, let's go ahead and make it a component actually. So select that, right-click on it and click Make Component. And we'll just call this Disk. And hit Create. So you can see how now this is a component. Now whenever I rotate this... If I make a copy of it, those are both copies of the same component. So if I adjust one, it's going to adjust the other one as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this in a circle using the rotate tool. So all we're going to do is we're going to select this object. We're going to activate the rotate tool using the Q key. And we're going to set our center point of our rotation plane right on the origin where all the where all the axes intersect right here. So we're going to click once on that. Then we're going to come out here and click somewhere on the red axis. We'll move our mouse a little bit and if you tap the control key you can see how what that does is that comes in here and that creates a copy of this object. So we activated copy mode. So and all you're going to do is you're going to type in 30 and hit the enter key, that just means you made a copy 30 degrees to the side. And then what you're gonna do now is you're basically gonna type in times 11 and hit the enter key without clicking on anything else. And all that means is instead of creating one copy um, at 30 degrees, it creates 11 copies. So you can see how now I have this set of copies at 360 degrees. And so now what I can do is I can select all of these objects and I can make those a component and we'll just call this disk group and make sure this little box for replace selection with component is checked but go ahead and click the create button and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy upward and rotate that a little bit so you're gonna select this object you're gonna activate the move tool and you're going to do the same thing as we did with the rotate tool where you select this, you move it up, and you tap the control key. And you can see how as soon as I tap the control key, what this does is this creates a copy. So I'm just going to move my mouse to the top point of one of these to just kind of lock it to this. And I'm going to click. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate these objects. And so there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can start off and we can use the rotate tool to rotate this if we want to. So you can see how I can just kind of click and move this. And in this case, I'm probably going to do about a 10 degree rotation. And I'm going to hit the enter key. And so you can already see that you're probably going to have a little bit of an issue here in that uh, these are going to kind of overlap and you won't be able to see your spiraling shape very well. But for now, we're going to go ahead and first thing I'm going to do, um, we'll go ahead and create this and then we can adjust it in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. And if you'll remember, each one of these is a component. So if you remember, if I move one in one component, all the others are gonna move as well. Well, the same thing works with materials. So if I apply a material on the outside of one of these objects, you can see how it's gonna apply that to the one above it as well. So to the corresponding object. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a material just to one of these right now, just to kind of give us some visibility. Um, Cause what we're gonna do is we're going to, we're gonna keep making copies of this upward So you can see I made a copy of this upward 
Well now I'm gonna rotate this so that it sits in here properly. So in this case, this one would go 20 degrees. We can do the same thing and I can just kind of build on top of that. And you can see why I colored that object is so that I can see exactly where these objects are going. But so in this case, what we do is we'd rotate this one should be 30 degrees. Probably 40 degrees. So we'll take we'll rotate this another 10 degrees. There we go. And you can see how what I'm doing is I'm kind of building on this with the spiraling shape. So just keep kind of doing this. And what we want to do, the goal is to get this. So this one's probably 50 degrees. You can kind of tell just by moving your mouse and then looking. Oh, that's actually going to be 70 degrees or 80 degrees. There we go. You can see just kind of by uh, by generally moving your mouse over a point, you can get kind of close, and then you can figure out, and then you can use that to figure out exactly what angle you need to rotate this along. And you can see how. And this is something I talked about last week. You can see how you can use the rotate tool down here and just use the origin point because it doesn't matter as long as you're locked to that blue axis. It doesn't matter exactly where your your rotation point is as long as it's on the center. So you can see how what I'm doing is I'm moving my mouse over here and I'm getting kind of an idea. In this case, it looks like this is probably about 160 degrees. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm kind of continuing this upward. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this to the point where I have one full rotation of this object. Because once I have that full rotation of that object, it's going to be this guy right here. Then I can come in, I can erase out the rest of these. But if I have a full rotation in here, now what I can do is I can move this up. And instead of having to rotate it, anything, I can just type in times two or times three. And it just continues all the way up. You can see how this is spiraling. Um, and one of the issues that I'm having right now is there's so many of these disks in each one of these objects that you can't really tell what the spiral is without looking at the materials. So all you have to do is, if you remember, each one of these is a component. And so you can come in here and you can select every other one just by clicking on them. And you can delete those out. Well, now your spiral is much more pronounced because we got rid of half of these. So you can see a lot more what's going on here. And it helps that you have the different materials in here. So since these are modeled as components, you can come in here and you can do a lot of different kinds of things with this. You can kind of scale some of these objects down if you want to, to adjust the way that they look. Um, so you can make those a little shorter, or since these are all components, you can come in here and you can adjust these so that they're a different kind of shape. There's a lot of different things you could do in here, or you could just come in here and you could just color each one of these objects up with a different color. I'll use something that contrasts a little bit more. So I'm just using the material tool and just coming in here and just applying a different material to each one of these so that I've got these different colors kind of spiraling upward. And one thing to note on this is you do want to make sure when you're in here doing this that you're coloring the outside of these, not the inside of these. Because if you go inside these objects and color them up, then since these are all copies of the same component, um, you'd be coloring every single instance in here. But when you're outside of it, you're applying that material to the outside of the component like this, so you can apply a material, a different material to each one of those, if that makes sense. So anyway, that's where I'm gonna wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Uh, did you like this video? Um, is there something you would like to have seen different in this workflow? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com support. 
That's got everything from links to extensions you can purchase to help support the show to uh, links to my Patreon page. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.